This is Rugger Matrix International, the world's leading independent rugby podcast quoted more than anyone else. It's no wonder that our major partner is Strike, Australia's leading provider of Bluetooth car kits, so you can stay safe in your car and avoid hefty fines. So go hands-free with Strike. Enter the code Rugger Matrix and you'll get 10% off. Go to strike.com.au to get your discount. Rugger Matrix also brought to you by mybean.com.au. We sell at roasters prices. Let's get it on. This is Rugger Matrix International, episode 200. Hello and welcome to the first show of 2015. Yes, we have been away for a little while, but we're back with a vengeance. The first show for this World Cup year. And I'm your host, Juro San. But as you can see to my left, there's no Mark Cashman. Uh, He's busy putting the Waratahs program back together. So Cash Cow Enterprise now running uh, the TARS program. And as you can see, looking good for this week. And over my shoulder, you can see the uh, celebrations in Martin Place from last year's Super Rugby Champions, the Waratahs. We'll have a bit to talk to our uh, special guest about in a moment, including the Super Rugby that starts this weekend. And of course, uh, Six Nations underway and Ireland powering through the first round, as did England, as we looked forward to that later in the year. But as we look over my shoulder again and bring him in, it's none other than one of our favourites on Rugger Matrix, the great... New South Wales, Eastwood, and I had to get that in there, Eastwood, and uh, Wallabies prop, Ben Robinson. Ben, welcome to Rugger Matrix for our first show in 2015. Good to see you, mate. Cheers, Jeremy. It's good to be here. Congratulations on the double ton, mate. 200 shows. That's a, that's a great effort. Yeah, double ton in this uh, Cricket World Cup year too. Very <laughs> uh, apt. Ben, uh, it's great to chat to you, mate. Uh, you've been busy pre-season training. Uh, what's that been like as the Waratahs prepare their opening Super Rugby game against the Force on Sunday? That's a good, good thing too. Day Rugby at uh, Allianz Stadium, just wonderful. Exactly. Uh, the Force this Sunday is going to be an absolute ripper. <clears throat> Afternoon game at Allianz, which is always great for us. But um, yeah, preseason's been um, <clears throat> a usual Michael check of preseason. It's always, it's always very hard. Um, I came back on the fifth as, as, with all the other Wallaby players as well. So. Um, you know, we've got stuck in since the fifth, working really hard, running up those those great Coogee stairs and, um, and just putting putting a lot of effort and a lot of time into training. So I think, um, you know, I think the boys are come, coming along really well. I think if you ask any super rugby side, everyone's fit at the moment, everyone's fast. But I think, um, you know, realistically, we're, uh, you know, we're pretty happy where we are at the moment. Um, you know, there's no really down days for us at the moment. You know, we're, we're working pretty hard Monday all the way through to Saturday as well. So... Yeah, I think the boys are pretty excited to um, you know, get out there and, and play our first game against the Force this weekend. Very unique situation for you, Ben, because uh, you come into this uh, season with not only the Waratahs coach, the Super Rugby winning coach, but the Wallabies coach as well. What's, uh, what's been said about that? Has anything been mentioned by Michael Checker about how you handle the season with the dual roles? Uh, look, he's, he hasn't really spoke too much about it. I think um, if you ask him, he says he's 100% committed to the Waratahs uh, at this time of the year. And and uh, you can see what he's been doing at training. It's been 100% the whole time. Um, of course, it's going to be a, a tough challenge for him. But um, I know he's, he's got some great support staff around him. Um, you know, you know Daryl Gibson there and... Uh, and and the guys there, so um, you know, you know, they're, they're very solid. They're they're looking pretty good. Um, and I think um, you know, the challenge that he has in front of him is is, is this Sunday coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I think uh, when you when you finish the uh, end of season tour last year, the Wallabies uh, went through a lot of change. And I think uh, you know, the chat was, uh, yeah, yeah, Czech's a different sort of guy, but we we don't mind him from the other players. Is that what you felt? Yeah, I think a lot of the players said that as well. I think, um, you know, from my initial chats with a few of the guys, I think, um, you know, they they weren't too shocked by his approach. I think a lot of the players really um, embraced it, really got on with it and really enjoyed um, his style of training and playing as well. I think um, <clears throat> it's it's no secret that, you know, he likes the boys to train really hard, work really hard, really bond as a team. And I think, um, you know, last year the results didn't go um you know the way we wanted. Um, you know, I think the team grew really, really strong together. I think um, the other players got a real taste of um, you know what he expected from the players, what he expected from the staff as well. So um, you know, I think last year was a good start, but um, you know, there's still, there's still a while to go. Really worked on your fitness last year, Ben, and that was the key for you guys to compete in the latter stages of each game. I mean, you really did play that 80 minutes. 
uh, perfectly, uh, and that really helped in those uh, those gripping last couple of matches. In the final, was a great example. Has the fitness been just as arduous this year? Uh, yeah, it's been it's Could been very tough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't really <laughs> like look at Gucci steps. It's a great place when you're when you're actually there and looking out the ocean. But when you're uh, when you're looking in front of you, and there's about a thousand stairs in front of you. That's not the best, but you know, that's a part of it. Um, you know, there's I think Michael said there's probably better other other things we can do better. That's fitness related, but for us, it's more of a challenge. Um, you know, we get down there Saturday morning. It's nice, bright and early. You're there for probably an hour, hour and a half. And then you've got your whole day ahead of you as well. Um, I think the feeling after you've finished it, it's, it's a feeling of elation. <laughs> it feels like I've, I've run a marathon and, and finished it. I'm very happy. But, yeah, it's, uh, all the boys get it. Well, get into it. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely not you know, a walk in the park. Um, you know, players rip in, work really hard. You know, there's you know, a lot of players eating each other on and making sure that everyone's ripping in. So, you know, it's, you know the fitness sides are really good, but I think um, you know mentally it's 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 a challenge that you you, you know you you want to embrace and try and, and push through it. Well, everyone's going to be chasing you. I was listening to Michael Checker's press conference today, saying that he wants to start off like you left off. You know the the way that you played the game last year. Is how you should play the game from game one this weekend. Is that how you feel? Yeah, um, I didn't see his, his press conference, but. Um, you know we're we're working really hard on on I suppose our identity who we are with this with this new bunch of players as well. Um, I know even though we've retained a lot of players from last year, there's still new players coming in, still embracing the system and 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 how it works. But um, you know it'd be good to start with a you know the, the, I suppose the same way we started last oh end of last year and and that's you know working hard for each other, playing hard for each other, playing a nice physical game. So um, yeah, no, hopefully hopefully it pans out this weekend. Uh, Dave Dennis, of course, uh, hungrier than anyone, really, because of that injury that robbed him of playing in the final last year. It's great to see that he was renamed captain. Uh, was that a popular decision? Yeah, very popular. It was, um, I think for Dave to come back, it's his second ACL operation on that knee. And, um, you know, I'm good mates with Dave. And I know how much time, how much effort uh, he put in behind the scenes. I think he travelled even to America to, um, to do the extra work on his knee as well, um, you know, physical training. So he's put in so much work for, for him to get on the paddock, even against the Chiefs you know, last weekend. I think he, he got brought on early. Um, Mitch Chapman had a head knock, so he came on and uh, didn't look like he missed a beat whatsoever. But a you know, very inspirational captain, a true New South Wales Welshman. And you know, it'd be good to see you know, if he's playing this weekend. Um, I think the team gets released. Um, yeah, not too far away, but if he's playing this weekend, then um, you know, it'd be good to see him out there charging hard. All right, Ben, so uh, everyone's going to be after you this year, and when you lead from the front and, and set the trends, everyone follows, so you've got to keep ahead of the pack. I mean, uh, are you wary of that uh, as you head into 2015, that uh, you can't just roll out the same old thing as last year and expect to win? Yeah, I think... Um you know, if we sit on our heels and sit on our hands and, and think that what we did last year is going to get us a premiership this year is uh, is probably not right. I think um, even the way we've approached training, the coaches um, have approached training. It's been, um, you know, pushing the boundaries, trying new things, trying um, different strategies, by, you know, different ways around kicking or, or whatever it is. I'm not too, I'm too savvy about the kicking right. side of things. As long as it's not the box kick, mate. <laughs> no, mate. I don't know about that box kick. Um, but yeah, look, there's, you know, I think, you know, we got have to be creative. Um, and, and as you said, if you're on the for forefront, you're trying new things. Um, if they come off, you know, how good. Um, but at least we're having a go, having a crack. So um, I know the coaching staff have been working really hard on, um, you know, creating opportunities where, you know, they, they can you can put in that bit of change into training where it can be beneficial in the long term. Ben, uh, how do you think uh, the scrummaging is going to shape up this year? And you know, for your personal game, I mean, I know speaking to a lot of other tight heads, they just hate, even in Australia, hate playing against you. Um, <laughs> but but uh, I mean, where do you think your game is? Because I think, and, and many people know this, that the older you get, the better you get at scrummaging. Do you feel that way? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think um, you know, the more scrums you pack down, I think the more you... Um, you know, have that sense of what's actually happening in the scrum. Um, but I think, you know, even the past couple of weeks, we had a trial game against Parramatta, Randwick, and Sydney University, and we scrummaged well there and came up against the Chiefs on the weekend and, and had a solid performance there as well. But, um, 
No, scrummaging in, in Australia has changed a hell of a lot since um, since I first started. Um, you know, these new laws have really taken out the the engagement in the scrum. Um, you know, your shape, maintaining good posture, the whole lot in the scrum is, is very crucial. Um, and I think, you know, looking at I suppose even the Six Nations on the weekend, England, Wales, going there, you know, the scrum played a massive part in the game as well. Um, so I think if you know, you were talking about being in the forefront of trying new things or being creative and adaptive. I think um, that's an area in the game that, you know, definitely in New South Wales and definitely um, in Australia needs to, uh, I suppose, pick up. But, you know, also just be open to new ideas as well because, you know, these laws are only been in for a couple of years now. So, um, you know, there's, there's still plenty to learn there. It's still, I'm, I'm still learning as well. Um, so it's a big, big change from the, the previous laws. Um, you know, not saying I knew everything about the previous laws, but the new laws come in and you try and be on on top of it, make sure that you, you, you're you being creative there and making sure that um, and even at training, I suppose, last you know, last month, last you know, month and a half, you know, there's been a big focus on the scrummaging. Um, you know, this is not just the, you know, the, the props and the hooker and a couple of locks. It's it's a six and seven, the number eight, also putting a lot of work, making sure that um, they're across what's happening uh, up front. Absolutely. I think adaptability is a big thing too, uh, Ben. The uh, Ireland game was a great example. Ireland have shown uh, that was a pulsating match and then the second half became an arm wrestle. Um, what, uh, what did you learn about that, uh, that event? Yeah, I think if you, you look at Ireland, <clears throat> you look at their performance of the, over the last, I suppose, two years in inter- international rugby, they're, they're a side that are improving. They only knocked off New Zealand, was it two years ago, um, over in Ireland. And... Um, I think New Zealand scored in the last two minutes to actually win the game. So, you know, they're they're a side that's playing really strong footy. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they're right up there with you know one can of they, the top. Can they win the cup? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I don't know. I've never played in a World Cup before, so um, you know, I haven't even looked at their their, their, their draw. Six Nations so, champions, uh, you know, they've they're peaking at the right time. Uh, you know, they're doing the great job. They've got Les Kiss, of course. Les Kiss, a, a, a great defensive North Sydney Bears player. <laughs> I saw him actually over in uh, last year in Ireland. He's looking, he's looking very young, he's kissy. But, yeah, look, they're a great side. Um, Ireland, uh, they, they won't be far off the uh, the top four, if, if that's a good answer for you. Mm, yeah, what do you think about their scrummaging? Because they, they've been maligned a lot over the years, but, uh, you know, they've been managing to... Um, must love. They've always found big back rowers too. Really strong back rowers. Yeah, big potato growing, big strong boys out, out the back there. Yeah, look, they're 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 a good scrum. Um, you know, they caused us a bit of trouble last year as well. Um, but you know, that's I suppose it's, their four packs are a, a strong pack as well. But their their backs are, you know, they got some fire. They got some you know great players out wide as well who are you know can carry the ball hard. Uh, I get on really well with it and always have, and I know you have, but how's Curly been in camp, mate, back into it and this sort of t- the day-to-day, and he's recommitted for another year to the Waratahs and uh, Australian rugby? Yeah, he hasn't missed a beat, um, Curly. I think, um, you know, from me seeing him, you know, the, his whole career, I think he's really taken a, you know, you'd say a leadership role in, in the side, but he's, he's really standing up, putting his hand up, um, you know, making constructive comments, Around the way we train, the way we play as well. Um, and it's good to see him sign for the Waratahs again for for another year. Um, that's great for New South Wales. You know, he grew up here. Good, good Joey's boy. So, um, you know, I think um, <laughs> even though it was a nice Kings boy, but yeah, it was, it was good to see him. Um, good, to, good to see him sign again. And I think um, he's just a positive influence around the boys as well. Um, I can't, you know, I can't say how much. I uh, can't say enough about how much he does for for, for the younger players coming through as well, um, and just to see his energy around training is a, you know, he's a firecracker when he trains, and you know, the more often that he's got the the, the ball in hands, I think it's, it can be better for any any side he plays in. Ben, how much? Uh, and I remember doing a story on you at the time when you had that knee injury that robbed you of the World Cup in New Zealand. How badly do you want to play at the end of the year? Yeah. <laughs> It's it's a tough one to talk about about the future. I think um, you know for me to to make it to, um, you know to the World Cup or make it to that level, it's it's baby steps for me at the moment. Um, and then I know it's <laughs> you've probably heard this many times, but it starts this weekend for me. I've got to put a solid performance on. Um, I think it might have been the last time we played the Force. They uh, they upset us over over here in Perth. So either uh, you know, we've got the the honey badger. I think we'll be back mm-hmm. playing this weekend. So um, 
yeah, so it's you know for me it's baby steps. It's it's, it's playing good solid footy. Um, and I think I think a big one for me this year is just really enjoying my footy as well. And uh, I think when I'm enjoying my footy, and then then I'm playing good footy. Yeah, that's what Matty Burke used to say. You know, go out there and enjoy yourself as well. And I think if you enjoy yourself, you, you you pretty much are playing well at the same time, aren't you, Ben? Yeah, it's a shame I don't say that about my my, my golf game. <laughs> yeah. Finish with a good off, shot. Mate? What are you playing it. off then? What am I playing off? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm great at I'm great at Ambrose. So if uh-huh. you if you want to play a game of Ambrose with you, know, then I better uh, look. Um, I don't have an official handicap, but it wouldn't be too far off. You know, fifteen odd. Yeah, well, uh, I did a story on Nathan Blacklock last year. He's off three. And then he's down the back down to two. So uh, he could do anything. <laughs> and he's great yes, basketball yeah. too, Ben. Very good hand-eye. Yeah, very hand-eye, hand everything. Uh, so, Ben, <laughs> this weekend, there's a big blow, though, for the Western Force. No Matt Hodgson. He, is, uh, he had a wonderful season for Australia as well last year and has basically their dynamo, their leader. Yeah, yeah, that is very disappointing. I heard he... He strained a hamstring and he's he's out for a while, so that's very disappointing for um you know, for them. I think um you know last year he had a stellar year, you know he's he's thirty one, thirty two now, so he's he's still playing really solid footy. Um, yeah, it's disappointing for them, you know, for them to lo- to lose him. I think as you said, he's an inspirational leader for them. Um, yeah, if he leads by the front, he's he's normally the the, the top tackle maker of, of the game. So um, yeah, it's dis- disappointing that they lose him, but. In saying that, they're a quality side. They know across the park. You know they've got plenty of Wallabies there. You know Pat Cowan there at Loosehead, Nathan Charles as well. So um, and the big the big dog Ben McCowan there at number eight. So they're they're a really good side. Um, and uh, you know even though it's a losing him, there's there's plenty of players that can stand up there. Yeah, I mean Michael Foley re-signed too with the Force uh, just today or yesterday, and uh, he's um, he's a masterful uh, forwards coach, in particular a tight five coach. Yeah, he's he's definitely a tactician. Um, he coached me many times, or well, many years at the at the Waratahs and the Wallabies as well. So um, you know, for me, I, I a lot of my credit and my scrummaging to Michael um, doesn't mean I'm going to go easy if I'm if I get on the park on Sunday. Um, but yeah, he's he you know he's set piece work. He's you know he's second to none. Uh, interesting that we always uh, nowadays start with the local derbies. Are you a fan with that with, of that Ben, or would you like to get your teeth stuck into the South Africans or the Kiwis? That's a pretty one, a uh, pretty easy one to answer. I think Sunday afternoon, Allianz Stadium, you know, big crowd. Um, you know, pl- hopefully, plenty of kids come along, families come along. Um, I think it was about forty-four dollars. I think in the family pass. Don't quote me on that, but I looked at that and go, you know, for you know, for, for parents to bring their kids out and, and watch afternoon footy is great. Like, you know, as you said before, I was an Eastwood boy, so I grew up playing afternoon rugby when I when I was younger and and, and loved the feeling of it as well. And I know crowds last year were really strong for us as well, and they're probably our, our, our biggest sellers. But uh, you know, afternoon in Sydney, watching footy, you can't beat it. Ben, what's it been like since the Tars won the final against the Crusaders last year? You know, I remember when you came on through the academy. I uh, went to uh, South America with our tour in the end of uh, 2004, and and what a great time that was. And I'll release my full uh, memoir soon about that, Ben. Don't worry about yeah. that. But, mate, to be, ten, be ten, ten, <laughs> to be more than 10 years later, and uh, or about, almost 10 years later, I should say, almost 10 years later, to win the trophy after so much trying, and all the teams before that, I mean, what's it been like to be part of that premiership team? Yeah, look, it was, you know, last year was I don't know, sort of surreal. I, I can't believe it was. It's, it's the start of the 2015 Super Rugby season again. It only feels, yeah. feels like six, you know, not even a few months ago that, you know, we're there out at, at Homebush and, and holding the trophy. So it comes on very quick. But you know, I think the, the feeling at the moment. I'm. I was very fortunate coming to the Waratahs. It was a, a very strong core um, bunch of leaders that really. Um, Put the team in, you know, for many years in in, in a good place. Um, you know, Phil War, Dan Vickerman, um, you know, who else was it? Matt Burke at the end of that as well. Uh, Nathan Gray, our defensive coach. I think those players. When I first arrived, I was very lucky um, to have those players really influence my game. Uh, my game, the you know, the, the type of person I am, the type of player I am as well. And I think um, yeah, there's a there's a, a stage there. I think where you know. 
maybe maybe the side lost their way a little bit. But you know, looking at it at the moment, I think players when they, new players that they come in, I think you know there's an ex- expectation of them to you know to perform at a level to. To, to be a certain way and to play a certain way and, and, and to train a certain way as well. So I think, you know, I'm not saying a young bloke anymore, but if I was a young, you know, young bloke coming through training now, then I think there's a there's a little little bit of that at the moment to, to what I had back when I when I first arrived. Yeah, so and things haven't been easy like <laughs> you know, not quite year this year. No, it's just not quite. Things are, things have definitely got harder. And, for, and, 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 and in, in a good way as well. Um, as you said, you don't want to sit on your heels and go, or sit on your hands and go, you know, we got the, we got the title last year and, you know, you know we'll be. But I think it's this attitude that um, the players and, and definitely the coaches have brought in that you want to be better. You want to, you want to play better. You want to enjoy your footy and, and work hard at it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the Crusaders, will they be there again, mate? You've seen them and played against them so many times. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll definitely be there. Um, you know, they're a strong side. I think if you look at the Chiefs as well, um, you know, we played them last weekend out at Campbelltown Stadium, and and they're, and they're a great side, and, and they're missing probably three or four of their of their gun players. So, you know, a lot of those Kiwi sides are always up there in the mix. Um, you know, the Crusaders, it's how many titles they won? Five or six titles now. They're they're always going to be a force to uh, to be reckoned with. Absolutely. Now, just to quickly back on the Six Nations, uh, I know that uh, you didn't get a chance to see all the games, but you would have seen our good old friend uh, of Rugger Matrix, James Haskell, take on the posts, uh, and uh, he didn't win there. Did you realise he <laughs> was actually on the bottom, not yeah. halfway up, up yeah. the post? He was running a bit upright at the occasion. Uh, there was a bit of um, toing and froing in the press beforehand, accusing Wales accusing England of too many decoy runners and playing a rugby league style. They actually got pinged a couple of times for that, but uh, it was a pretty good game. But England showed the fortitude to come from 10 points down and, and win the match. So Wales continue with their problems. Uh, England and Wales, obviously, they're going to be a threat later in the year for the Wallabies uh, in the World Cup. Uh, but England on home soil... Will grow an extra leg. Yeah, Here's for sure. That bizarre I, saying. So. I don't know what an extra leg would do for you. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I might stop there. <laughs> I don't want to say the next thing. But uh, yeah, look, it, England, they're, they're, they're a great side. Um, you know, playing at Twickenham, I think everyone loves playing at Twickenham, but when they're playing at home, they're, they're a different beast together. Um, you know, Wales as well, as you said on the weekend, I caught glimpses of the game. You know, they're, they're a solid side. They've been a good side for the last five, six years, and they've got a, a depth of players there as well. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think those Northern Hemisphere sides, you, you know, they're playing their test match f- football now. You know, it's probably four months or well, five months before, you know, the Southern Hemisphere starts playing as well. So I think they've got an advantage in, in playing that uh, nice and early as well. But, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're solid. England... They're across the park again, they're they're a good side as well. You know, their front row did really well. I think their scrum, you know, caught glimpses of it, but their, their scrum was really solid and, and caused a few turnovers, which uh, definitely changed the game. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be a, a great uh, year come the end of the year. Uh, we early start as usual with Super Rugby. Uh, we're what the second week or so into February in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, do you mind that? Do you think you've had enough break? What do you What do you feel? <laughs> Yeah, look, I think um, if you look at the year, it's a, it's a very short year in, at the front end of it. Um, there's a lot of footy to be played. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. Um, you know, training in Sydney on a, on a, on a summer's day is, is not too much of a, of a bad thing. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back into it. I think, you know, we, I had a solid break. I had about a month and a little bit off. Had a had a wedding over in, in Cape Town, which is really good to go back over to South Africa again. But um, yeah, it, it's, there's plenty of, plenty of break there. All right, Ben. Well, it's been great to catch up with you. Uh, good luck this weekend. I guess you'd hope the Reds and the Brumbies bash each other too on Friday night. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, you haven't got the Baron there with you, uh, Ben, to say goodbye to us? Or Wait a... Yeah, he's, he's um, just give me a sec. I'll have to grab him for you. All right, so Ben, ben Robinson is uh, getting the special <sighs> guest now. I'm going to... Um, ben, you won't see it now. <laughs> there he is. The there Baron. he is. <laughs> he looks like his daddy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Look, look, look. He's just out of feet, so his belly's a bit full at the moment. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the saying about owners and their dogs looking like is amazing. Now, Ben, you won't see it now, but I'm putting up an old shot of of the Baron when he was a little puppy, and look at him now. Oh, what a champion, hey? What a, what a cute face, yeah. Look at that. You'll get him right in there. <laughs> 
Oh, I might interview him next time. Uh, ben Robinson and the Baron, thank you for joining us on Rugged Matrix, episode 200, the World Cup year. And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to have you on for episode 200. Mark Cashman will be back next week, but he's busy putting the program together. And I hope he's got a good write-up of you, Benny. Ben, thanks very much, <laughs> mate. All the best on this weekend for the first game against Jeez. the Force. And good luck to you, the Baron. Yeah, it'll be good. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much for that, Jura. There he is, Ben Robinson, Jeez. joining us today on episode 200. We'll be back next week with 201. Bring on the World Cup this year.